Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we're going to just jump right in on today. Uh, I just pray that you are allowing the will of God to happen in your life. Day by day, I am realizing more and more that the will of God is there. And so you will hear me often say that, yes, the will of God is there. It is present. We have to find out what his will is for our lives and then believe by faith. It's going to line up. Okay, the will of God is going to line up with interests that you have in your life. We just uh, use them for the glory of God. And so someone might say, well, um, you know, I, I've been a hustler, you know what I mean? Um, but you can use it for the glory of God. You can use it for good and not for evil and not for bad. And so find out the will of God for your life. Make sure that you are connected to individuals who want to encourage that in you. Which brings me to what we're going to talk about today about being persistent. It has really been heavy on me for a, you know, a while. And I am uh, a motivational speaker. I've been doing that for years. And listen, I came in on the Lord side <laughs> as a motivational speaker. And, and so I, I do preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what I have a concern about is the lack of hmm, the lack of desire to for goals in our next generation I do see many that have their priorities in order they have goals they're going after their goals they're sharing they're teaching and then I see a lot that are not goal-oriented. They are not connected to anyone who encourages them, who tells them that, yes, there is good inside of them, and to develop their interests into livelihood, pursuing purpose, goals, and dreams. And so while this was on me so very, very heavy, I am reminded of what he called me to do in my life. I am reminded of the words of encouragement that he gives to me. And so I have to say that uh, before we can reach this next generation, sometimes we have to reach, all depends on the age, uh, the household to encourage them. Uh, my sister said something a couple of months ago, and it is so very, very true, that we have taught behavior. And so sometimes individuals are not taught because they weren't taught, because those before them were not taught, because they were not encouraged to grow and develop beyond the status quo and that's hurtful and that's harmful for generations to come and so I want to spend some time with you today to encourage you to be persistent if you have discovered your talents I want you to spend some time developing them and cultivating them being surrounded with individuals that want to see you do your very best, that encourage you. I'm not talking about pacifying you, but that challenge you to continue to grow in the path that you were in. Read, study to show yourself approved, study your craft, understand what it is that is in inside of you you have a desire and you have 
a vision, you have a goal, and it needs to be cultivated. It needs to be developed. It needs to be cultivated. And you can do it, but stay persistent. Do not allow frustrations and hard days and moments of aggravation or lack of support where you think that you should be getting support from certain individuals and it's just not coming in the volume that you think it should come in. But you encourage yourself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. We've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks and it's still in my spirit because guess what? I am the first partaker. And so as a leader um, and you are leading the people and you are encouraging others, you must take time out to encourage yourself uh, and stay persistent. Don't get so quick to throw in the towel. Once again, we are oftentimes looking for individuals that we think should come along and encourage us or maybe um, we don't need anybody to pacify us and do not look I'm saying this very very candidly don't look for somebody to come along and pat you on your back stop waiting for someone to come along and tell you that you're doing a great job stop looking for someone to come along and just feed your ego no don't do that what you can do is encourage yourself and do it daily be persistent in encouraging yourself daily because every day we need a module of encouragement an allotment of encouragement just like every single day we need God's help through the Holy Spirit to accomplish what we need in that particular day, in that module of 24 hours. We need to encourage ourselves. We need to have a module of encouragement for those 24 hours also. And so every single day, get up and encourage yourself. Um, what is it that you are pursuing? What is it that uh, you are working towards, encourage yourself. Every day is not going to be sunshine. You're going to have some rough days. Some days it may seem like you have to encourage yourself even more than others. But be persistent. Make sure that you are taking time to pour into yourself making sure that you have what you need to survive. And you can have what you need to survive through God, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can have exactly what you need to get through that module of the day. So for now, if you're just starting out, if you have had the thought of, you know, just walking away, you're frustrated, take one day at a time. And in that particular day, take one hour at a time that's right take one hour at a time set yourself some goals what would you like to get accomplished in your morning afternoon and then your evening and then at night go over your day what did you actually accomplish uh, don't have a bunch of windows open you know a bunch of tasks that you've started without actually completing anything and so if you are not good at multitasking here's what I have learned to do and I encourage you to do it as well um, I love to multitask but I had to trim my multitasking so what I do is is I assign um, tasks per hour and so if I say that I'm going to work on something for three hours, that's all that's getting. Uh, that's all the time I have for it for that day. I used to try and accomplish everything that I needed to do in one day. First of all, a lot of times that's unrealistic. All depends on what I need to do. Also, uh, it's draining and that's tiresome. And you can find yourself um, not taking care of yourself properly. So we don't want to start that. We want to make sure that we are 
taking care of ourselves properly. We have clarity. We are refreshed. We are renewed. But we want to remain consistent. Now, one of the modules that we do have and we teach, and I've shared it here several times with the Balance of Life. Uh, actually, we're I believe we're going to tap into it when we do the um, leadership awareness. Is we're going to talk about um, commitment, consistency, and completion, which is I like to call it. It is the three formulas, uh, the three C's formula. Uh, and so we must be committed and we must uh, be consistent and we must complete what it is that we have to do. And so you need to be persistent in order to fulfill the three C's formula. So develop a module for yourself. Encourage yourself. That's right. Encourage yourself. Be persistent. Don't get so frustrated that you want to throw in the towel. A lot of times we fail to look at what we already have. And we are looking outside of that scope. We're looking for something bigger. I do find that a lot of individuals want to start at 100 without realizing they need to start at zero. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Have a good foundation and whatever it is that you are doing so that when uh, the wind blows, okay, and change comes, your foundation is good and solid. That is key. Having a good, solid foundation. So don't be in a rush. Don't try to keep up with other people. Make sure that you have a good, solid foundation. For yourself and what it is that you want to do. And once again, make sure that you are surrounding yourselves with individuals with like-minded faith. I was having a conversation with my mother on yesterday afternoon. And I was sharing with, sharing with her on Saturday how my spirit and my heart was just grieved as I began to pray for the youth in our family and for their children um and so we were talking about that and i'm i was saying lord where is their go get where is where's their momentum where's their motivation um and we're just not seeing it in a lot of our youth now like i said i have seen quite a bit of those who are headed in the right direction um and they are goal oriented and I am so excited about that but when you are looking at your own bloodline let me tell you something it is bothersome it is troublesome and so I know it is beyond them that I want to pray for and intercede for and in some way possible give you some words of encouragement to help you along the way to help you in your dynamic of really doing some soul searching, finding out where it is that you are, discovering your gifts and talents. And I want to say to you that you can use them for good and not for evil. If you are quick on your feet, let me tell you something with thinking, and there are so many people that have a gift that money is drawn to them now don't use it as a scam use it for your good that's it use it for the good and so we have that's something that we have to learn we have we all have to learn this we have to learn to use it for our good that's what scripture says he says that all things will work together for the good for them who love him for those who are called according to his purpose so use what you have for your good if you have a business idea you have an interest and we have to learn the difference between a hobby and business oriented ideas 
you can turn your hobby into a business, but cultivate it, perfect it. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, sometimes we talk too much. If you're working on something, be careful who you share with. This is why I say encourage yourself. Get in the lab. And unless you are connected to someone, make sure that you are connected, that your connections are, are God-filled connections. That he is doing the connecting. That someone who, who, who prays for you, who prays for your vision, who encourages you, and when they see you slacking, when they see you backing off, that they go into prayer and periodically they they come back around and they ask you questions. Hey, how how are things going? And mean it genuinely. You don't need someone around you just to gather information to talk against what you're doing. What you need is someone who generally is concerned about you. And they want to see you win. They want to see you reach that next level. That's what you need in your life. If you are surrounded around anybody, and I say this for myself, I have had to trim my circle. And I actually saw something um, kind of close to what I'm about to say to you now. Um, when you're on a clear, good path, you don't need a huge circle. You need the right people around you. You need the right connections around you. I'm talking about some genuine people. And our eyes have to be open. Our spiritual eyes have to be open. Spiritual ears. Spirit of discernment. Catch what people are saying to you. Catch the words. Catch the conversation. Because what you're going to see is you're going to be able to tell the difference with genuine interest genuine encouragement you're going to be able to tell the difference between that and a spirit of jealousy if you are asking and i'm talking about truthfully asking you don't need no entourage you don't you don't need all of that you don't need a bunch of people to pump you up and build you up especially if your foundation is not good pure and true you don't need someone who is going to tell you to cut corners. <clears throat> mm -mm. No, you need someone who is going to say, get that foundation right. Did you work on that? Did you work on this? And that's, that's the kind of person that you need. You need the type of person that says, keep going, keep moving, keep pushing. Don't give up. Be persistent. Be consistent. Stay committed. You don't need anybody around you that is going to tell you oh you can take the day off come and hang out with me and and it's unprofitable now if we're going to go and sit in a, a, a conference and learn some new stuff together uh, if you want to if you think that that's going to benefit me to show me some interest then hey <clears throat> I might consider rearranging my schedule to attend that but if it's for some foolishness I can't help you. And then I also pay attention to the work ethic and the goal orientation of the person who's talking. Are you consistent? Are you committed? Have you completed anything? Are you persistent? Or are you quick to turn in the towel? What's your conversation? If oh, the only thing I hear out of your mouth is negativity, my ears are, are, are shut down to you. I, listen, I can't do it. If it's negative and there's always an excuse, there's always complaining, um, you always waiting on somebody to come and see you and hear you and applaud you and pat you on your back, I can't help you. That's a spirit, and I don't want that spirit attached to me. And so I am so concerned. I'm so concerned about this generation. I'm concerned about our generation. I know not everybody is called to be a leader. 
Not everyone is called to pour into others. I know that. Especially when the agenda is not in the right place. When the heart is not in the right place, then no. Don't you try to lead nobody. You leave people alone. But when you want to see people win for the kingdom of heaven, and you want to see them grow, because they've started to have children, there is another generation behind us. And so our generation needs to be encouraged, needs to be persistent. And then we can't take it all, we can't hold it all to ourselves. What good is that? Scripture says, what profits a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? What, what, what's the profit of, of one individual having all of this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, have all of these formulas and goals that have helped them, and they don't want to pass it along to help the, no, the next person. Do you not know that when we don't pass along the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, a generation is lost and, and they're left scrambling? And we cannot take on the mindset of, well, ain't nobody teaching me, ain't nobody taught me. Yes, they did. Their method might have been off. But you allow God to take what you heard and teach it to you his way. But yes, they did. Somebody taught you something. Whether it was in your immediate household, a teacher, a professor, someone that you watched afar off, somebody taught you something. So I'm praying that we get concerned if, if you're seeing some youth, if you're seeing other individuals and you see that there is no mo no motivation, no goal orientation, no nothing, if that doesn't concern you, then something is lacking in the individual. If it doesn't bother me, then if I can look at that and it doesn't bother me, then something wrong with me. I need to go back and check myself. If I can look at people suffer and continue to go through and I don't say anything, if I don't tap in and say, hey, what is it that you like to do? If you say, I like to do hair, I'm going to tell you, listen, um, start doing hair at home. Check out and practice your craft. Practice your craft. That's right. Practice your craft. Go and buy one of those mannequin heads. You don't have to buy the most expensive ones. You don't have to buy the most expensive hair weaving extension. But get it, work it, do some, t develop your own technique to it. Cultivate it, perfect it. Then start taking you in one or two clients. Use that money. To take some professional classes. Mm -hmm. You see how we start? It, it has to start at zero. Despise not the day of small beginnings. There are so many talented people who can do hair. But yet they refuse. To, to grow it and let it be a business. And the excuse that the enemy will plan in your head is, oh, everybody doing hair. But you are unique in your style. You are unique in the way you do it. It was never meant for one person just to do, is this not one hairstylist in the world? Because guess what? That one hairstylist can't get everywhere. If you love to cook, if you love to bake, perfect it. Mm -hmm. Perfect it. Perfect it in your own household. Cultivate it. Start there. And then, listen, families have events. Or you don't have to wait for a family event. Do a little luncheon or something at your house. 
invite some friends. Do something special just for your family. Create dishes and and perfect the outcome and and the presentation and do all of that. Start there. Start with your own meal. Your presentation. Your ingredients, the flavor, do do all of that. But start from somewhere. But get motivated. Be persistent. If that is what you desire to do. Learn about it. Look look at other. There's so much on social media now. Things that you can look at. And, and to get encouraged. To get motivated. Because what I love about what I do see. Is I see individuals talking about starting from the ground on up, being persistent, having those tough times, having those days of struggle, but they kept getting up. They kept encouraging themselves. And that is what you need today. Keep encouraging yourself. Every single day. And guess what? It's going to get better. That's right. It's going to get better. The days that it's raining outside and you can't get outside, that's the time to get in the lab. Mm -hmm. The days that, and if you are already in business and you know your slow time, your periods are slow time. This is even in ministry, okay? That's the time to get in the lab. That's the time to study. That's the time to develop what God has put into you and encourage yourself in it. So perfect it. Be persistent. On yesterday, let me tell you what we did yesterday. Now, I like to move my craft days around. I really do. And yesterday, I decided it was craft day. I ministered on Sunday. And so yesterday was really a downtime for me. But I pre-planned on Sunday after church, picked up a few things because the things that we create are for our magazine, Hope and True. We do sell some of those things, but the majority of the things that are created are so that I can do layouts for Hope and Truth magazine. And also we did put up our Lunch and Learn on Saturday for the Balance of Life, uh, talking about tools that tell the story behind your business tell the story of you so yesterday uh, I took out the things that we purchased and did some custom items loved you know and so then I'll, I'll pick another day that I need to set up some things so that I can take some photos for the magazine and like I said, every day, every single day, you have to get up and you have to encourage yourself. You must get up every single day and encourage yourself. You have to. If the phone don't ring, encourage yourself. If a text don't come through, encourage yourself. If a post don't come through, say in your name. If it don't come through, you have to encourage yourself. You have to get up and you have to encourage you. Because if you are waiting and it does not come through, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to walk away because the enemy is going to come in with all kind of negative thoughts that nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody is interested in what you are doing. But I came by to tell you, get interested in yourself. You show interest in what you are doing. Cultivate it, develop it, love it, encourage it, and watch it grow. The only way you're going to fail is if you don't start. The only way you're going to fail is if you give up and you turn around and you walk away. 
that's our time for today. But you guess what? I'll be back tomorrow. You know, I love you. Have a blessed day.